The Genesis G90 is Korea's answer to the Mercedes S-Class, but does it really compete against the gold standard in executive sedans? We have a full review right now on Driving Sports TV. For the 2020 model year, the Genesis G90 received a facelift that indicated the future direction of the brand. Big gaping maws are all the rage, and Genesis has embraced this design ethos with no apologies. If exterior design is your primary consideration, your decision may be made up right now. For 2021, the Genesis is carrying over with only minor changes. All-wheel drive is an option, as is a 3.3-liter turbo V6. But the model we're testing today is the loaded rear-wheel drive V8 in ultimate trim. As you see it here, you're looking at $76,695, US dollars, including destination. To quickly price out an equivalent Mercedes-Benz S-Class, you have to choose either more or less horsepower. So let's go ahead and pick the V8, even though the Mercedes is turbocharged, add in a few equivalent options, and boom, we're already at 120 grand. Even the cheaper model is still priced out at about 105 grand. So keep that in mind with the Genesis, even when I'm critical on some aspects of the car, it's a huge price savings over the competition. So much, you can literally buy a Toyota Supra with the money you pocket compared to the S560. Now let's go in deeper with this Genesis G90. Under the hood is a naturally aspirated 5-liter direct-injected V8, good for 420 horsepower and 383 pound-feet of torque. This places it right between the Mercedes S450 and the S560 sedans in terms of total power output. The G90's engine is connected to an 8-speed automatic transmission with paddle shifters and intelligent drive modes. All-wheel drive is a $2,500 option with either engine, but ours came with the standard rear-wheel drive. EPA rates this setup at 16 miles to the gallon in the city, 24 on the highway. Now if you compare this to the Mercedes S560, that vehicle gets up to 27 miles to the gallon on the highway. Of course, it has a much higher price of entry, so you have to keep that in mind. In the back is a massive trunk, which is a hallmark for the class. This fits up to 15.7 cubic feet of stuff. Plus, it has a pass-through for skis. Under the floor is a spare and tools. Any proper executive sedan is going to have an extraordinary second row. And true to form, this G90 serves up some very nice touches for the passengers. Okay then, this being a luxury sedan and a full-size one at that, it competes with the likes of, you know, Mercedes S-Class. And as such, it is designed for second row comfort. I got tons of leg room, even behind the driver's seat. A little pop-down vanity mirror. Wow, looking good. I also have, check this out, ah, my own center console with cup holders. Put that back in. Now from here, I can adjust my seat. Woo, power seat adjustments, that's cool. I can also power my screen. And then I have basically the same setup that the driver has, but in the second row. And here I can look at map, navigation, radio, media, HD satellite, radio stuff. So I can look at, you know, weather. Although I can see it's sunny out now. The sun just came out, so there's that. And of course, like all of these systems, this is also, it is not touchscreen. I thought it was touchscreen. <laughs> okay, so unlike all of these systems, uh, the second row is not a touchscreen. It does require to touch this little thingy here. And I can see traffic and weather, which is kind of nice. Down here, there is a lot more stuff. I can close this screen back there because the sun is coming in and starting to annoy me. I can also turn on seat coolers, heaters, and I can also adjust where the wind blows, which is cool. Yeah, you know, this is pretty swanky. Even get my own USB and a 12 volt socket. This is the lifestyle. The only thing missing are seat massagers. Hmm. Ooh, two more 12 volts. Wow, this, this got everything. I would like a little more headroom though. I'm feeling pretty close here. I'm six foot one and uh, almost rubbing. If you're like six three, six five, you're gonna have problems here. Guess you could always just put the seat way back. How far back will this go? 
Mm, still not enough. Okay, let's check out that front seat. Oh yeah, this is nice. I have just spectacular seats here. I mean, really, the amount of adjustments we can do with these seats are pretty insane. I can even put the headrest up and down with using the uh, power adjustments. Every panel on these seats is adjustable. The only thing they're really missing are massage units. And I know that sounds a little hoity-toity, but the fact is, is that at this level, it's not unusual to get massage units. In fact, the $87,000 Volvo XC90 we just had, that had massage units. See? Even the Swedes can do it. The materials in here are spectacular. We have natural wood with the grain. Oh, that's pretty. Uh, leather is so soft to the touch. In fact, the whole dash is this soft touch leather. Uh, the only things that really kind of stick out here are uh, nothing because it's an awesome interior. I guess the one thing that does kind of seem out of place is it's kind of a more of a low rent gauge cluster, kind of something that you would find in, say, a Hyundai. And I say that having been in the new G80, which is the smaller version of this vehicle, but the more recent design. The interior of that one has a holographic display. Once you go holographic, it's hard to go back. And so this one, I'm sure this will get updated for next year, but currently it's still a traditional cluster with a small color screen in the middle. And you know, it does have useful information from you know fuel economy. I'm getting 14 miles to the gallon right now out of that thirsty five liter V8. It has like things like the adaptive cruise control screen and what not in there. Down here, we have more seat controls, heating and cooling. I also have a heated steering wheel and I can control that back screen from up here as well. Excuse me, sir. You want uh, the, the sun to be blocked? Okay, there we go. Fascinating. There we go. Love it. Drive modes right above that. Sport, eco, custom, and comfort. It doesn't do a heck of a lot. It's going to make the car either more aggressive, less aggressive. It's your standard drive mode fare. I do like that they went with a traditional controller. Nothing fancy there. Overall, great interior. Love it. Not nearly as cool as a Mercedes S-Class, but the comforts are here. They really nailed the essentials, and that's important. If you have a mobile device, it does not support wireless CarPlay. You have to plug it in. Uh, the outlet is right here. And there's also a slot that's padded that you drop your phone in that's a charging, it's a wireless charging pad. Now, the downside here is that if you have anything bigger than an iPhone 11 Pro, it's not gonna fit. A Max unit would definitely not fit in here. In fact, even this one, doesn't really fit because you can't close it. So that is just an ongoing design issue with pretty much every car is that they just don't know what to do with these pads to make them, you know, universal and functional as they should be. I kind of like this, but it just feels like, ah, man, could they have not made that a half an inch deeper? Hmm. Oh, well. Moving on. Up here, we have the infotainment screen, and it is customized for Genesis. It is not as cool as the one in the G80, but it is still kind of nice. It really reminds me of Lexus. It has that kind of Lexus boxy feel to it, but the essentials are here. You got connected services, part of the, you know, if you buy Genesis, you can opt into connected services for concierge and all that kind of stuff. I can look at weather. It's a split screen, which I can set up for different screens over here. I can even flick to different displays. So it's not just a controller, it's also a touch screen. Or if I wanted to, I can look at these glorious maps and I can make them full screen. And that really is, a, the, the high resolution display is fantastic. The downside though is that it looks like the menu system is kind of an up -resed. It's a little soft as far as the graphics go, but once you dive into that navigation system, super sharp, looks great. Also, very easy to use. I can just type in Starbucks. But you know what? Let's not do Starbucks. People have been requesting that I do independent coffee shops. So I'm gonna do my favorite one that's nearby here. We're gonna do Victor's Coffee. 
I've been going there so long, I used to go there when Victor still owned the place. That was like 15 years ago. Hit that and search. Loading details, there it is, Victor's Celtic Coffee, and away we go. The route guidance will start now. To get one of their great Java Janes. So the system works, it's smart, it's intelligent, it looks great, it even gives me what the current price of gasoline is, which is neat. Yeah, overall, this is great. Paddle shifters, leather steering wheel, I even have a heads up display. Oh, and we need to talk about safety because this is also loaded with all the greatest hits. You have blind spot warning, rear cross traffic alerts, you have collision mitigation with pedestrian detection, oh, sunroof. So let's stop just yammering about this thing and let's take it out and drive and see how well it handles and see just how much power that engine puts out because really at this class you can't just look good you can't just feel good you also have to have that power that really exudes confidence for the class so let's see if it has that you know that that executive confidence Of course, one of the reasons that you get a car like this is for the performance. This is a five liter V8. Let's see what it can do in a zero to 60. Put it in sport mode. Three, two, one, go. What? Oh, a little wheel spin there. 40, 50, and 60. <laughs> okay. That's pretty exceptional. <laughs> oh man, that was fun. <laughs> That 0-60 to 60 was pretty quick for a vehicle weighing nearly 5,000 pounds. We measured 0-60 to 60 at 5.14 seconds, with a 0-30 to 30 brake at 2.08. That's faster than the official numbers for the Mercedes V6-powered S450, but still not quite as fast as the beefier F560's 4.6 seconds to 60. So this is an 8-speed automatic trans mission and it does shift pretty promptly but it does feel like you know a pretty normal um, automatic transmission in the shifting department there's nothing yeah there's nothing special here it's just again competent of course this vehicle is equipped with adaptive dampening suspension and that means that when you go into sport mode it'll actually tighten things up uh, and it's not too extreme it's actually pretty subtle but the difference is important. Uh, once you're in sport mode, you can whip around corners much easier than in comfort mode. Because in comfort mode, it actually feels um, more like kind of a roly-poly boat. Once into sport mode, it handles kind of like I think it should. In fact, I would almost argue that sport mode should be the default for this vehicle because it's still very soft. It's still very comfortable to drive. Um, it's just that the comfort setting, I think, is a little too squishy. Now let's test out how the adaptive cruise control works. So we got a bunch of traffic up here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on, hit set. See, cruise on, set. I get the lovely gauge cluster here, which shows me what's going on. I'm just gonna throw that speed all the way to the stratosphere and we'll pace it so it's close. And we'll see if it lane centers. Now the heads up display is actually quite nice. You can't see it, I don't have a shot on that, but there's some, it's really bold, easy to read. It gives me the, the distance, it shows me what my target speed is. And this is doing a really good job of tracking right in the middle and maintaining a good gap. Yeah, overall, this is fine. This is exactly what you want in a vehicle like this. Um, but again, it doesn't do anything more than, you know, uh, than a Subaru Legacy would do. I, obviously, I'm not comparing this car to a Super Legacy, but in terms of the adaptive cruise control, not really exceptional, but really good, solid. It is, it works, it does what it's supposed to, and it's solid. It is interesting when you're in the turn signal, you actually get a camera view in the gauge cluster. Now, we've seen this with other vehicles from Hyundai and Genesis. Uh, one of them puts it in the circles, which I found distracting and awful. This one puts it in the middle, and I think that's okay. You gotta wonder, who's gonna buy this? I mean, it's an executive transport vehicle. It has the big fold-down thing in the back with the extra screens and all that kind of stuff. I mean, this is squarely aimed at somebody who would probably normally look at an S-Class, you know, for exactly that, executive transport. 
Um, Because I don't think most people need this much second row space or to have that fancy of accommodations in the second row. I mean, honestly, I have teenagers. They're not worth that. There is a segment of the market of people who just like large executive sedans as daily drivers. And I can't argue with that. I mean, this thing feels, it feels like you're driving something epic in terms of size and power. It has a real commanding feel of the road. However, for me, I prefer something a little smaller, a little more nimble, love that G70. The G70 is great, especially the all wheel drive with the 3.3 liter turbo. Oh, perfect. Uh, This one, super competent very good in a conventional way. Nothing exceptional. If you want exceptional, spend an extra 20, 30, easily 40 grand on that Mercedes S-Class and you will get something that is truly, truly exceptional. However, most people don't have a spare 40 grand just kicking around. And for those people who still want a large executive sedan that is excellent in every aspect, but don't really need exceptional, the $77,000 Genesis G90 is a very good choice. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this look at this. Uh, Unfortunately, we can't really do any off-road tests with this thing, so this review is a little shorter than normal. Uh, If you want to see more reviews, please be sure to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell leave a comment below. Would you get this or would you want to save up for something like that S-Class? Post a comment below. Again, we're here every week. We'll see you again next week. I'm Ryan Douthit for Driving Sports TV. We'll see you then.